Hello everyone and welcome back to the Endurance Spaceplane mission. In the first episode of this mission, we took off the single stage spaceplane and took it to Minmus. We landed on the flats, which is where we left off. We're currently taxiing to the other side of the flats, which will give us a better takeoff location. Next stop will be another couple moons, and the first one of those will be Gilly. Now, Minmus to Gilly might sound like a very easy transfer. I myself certainly thought it was going to be, but it proved to be more challenging than I had anticipated, and we'll see that as we go. In order to do an efficient transfer from Kerbin to Eve, it's really important that we leave at the right angle in a transfer window. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the elliptical orbit we'll have around Kerbin, after ejecting from Minmus, has its periapsis at the right point. In order to do this, we need to make sure that our initial orbit after taking off from Minmus is at the correct inclination, such that we can eject at one of the nodes. As a result, the first major challenge in this mission was making sure that I ascended from Minmus at the right time, such that my orbit around Minmus would then have a node of inclination at the right point that I could eject from Minmus at that node and find myself reaching Kerbin at the right angle. Another challenge that presented itself here was making sure that my takeoff run was very precisely angled. While I've put myself at the right part of the flat such that we'll have as much takeoff room as possible, there is a very thin part in the center and we need to aim directly down that part, otherwise we'll hit some of the rugged terrain around the outside of the flats and things would blow up. I gave myself a bit of velocity past what was needed to get my apoapsis up to 6 kilometers because I needed to have enough altitude to clear the mountains around the outside of the flats, and I made sure to give myself just enough that we will have our first low pass of this episode. And to foreshadow the future somewhat, I can promise you guys that this will not be the last, nor the lowest, low pass of this mission. Landing on and taking off of the flats and all these little tricks don't save that much delta-v on their own, but the sum of all these little tricks adds up to considerable delta V over time. And having estimated how much delta V I'll need to hit all my goals for this mission, I know it's going to be tight. So I am trying to do this as absolutely as efficiently as I can. To that end, I burned into an elliptical orbit of Minmus with my apoapsis right out at the edge of the sphere of influence, such that I could fix my inclination with as little delta V as possible. And with that done, it was now time to complete the final ejection, which will take us to elliptical Kerbin orbit. Those watching closely may notice that the final ejection from Minmus here occurred more than five years after taking off from Minmus. This is because I initially tried using the transfer window from Kerbin to Eve that occurs around two years, but found that to be a little bit wasteful in terms of delta V and found this one to be much more efficient and given that I really want to maximize this mission I'm okay with increasing the overall duration of the mission to make it as efficient as possible. The final trick used here to maximize our efficiency in the ejection from Kerbin is to first do a small burn at periapsis prograde that doesn't eject us from Kerbin. This small burn will time the point at which we get back to periapsis the second time to be at the exactly right time to maximize our use of the transfer window. After doing a couple elliptical orbits of Kerbin to kill some time, we are finally ready to eject from Kerbin on rendezvous with Eve. Now that we're on route to Eve, this brings us to another challenge, which is why one of the reasons why I didn't use that first transfer window around two years. Because Gilly is on this strange, inclined elliptical orbit, and because I want to save as much delta V as possible, I want to try to capture in EVE with an orbit that's very close to the inclination of Gilly. I also want to make sure that the periapsis of my orbit is roughly aligned with the periapsis of Gilly. This will mean that I, when I break into an elliptical orbit of EVE, the apoapsis of my orbit will align with Gilly's orbit at the point at which Gilly is as far away as possible from EVE. This will decrease the magnitude of my injection burn on Gilly once I reach there. I quickly realized that I wasn't going to be able to minimize my delta V ejecting from Kerbin while also reaching Eve at the exact ideal inclination. I therefore decided to not capture at Eve on the first pass, but to do a gravity assist off of it that would throw my orbit onto the correct inclination 
such that when I rendezvoused with Eve a second time, I would then be at the ideal angle of inclination and would hopefully be able to capture and intersect with Gilly. It was then I realized that between successive rendezvous with Eve, the location of my periapsis had ping-ponged to the other side of the planet, such that now it was directly opposite from Gilly, which was directly opposite of where I wanted it to be. I therefore did a second gravity assist off of Eve, such that when I had my third rendezvous with Eve, my orbit would now be at the correct inclination and the correct angle of my periapsis, such that it would be best aligned to capture and rendezvous with Gilly. I also realized that my relative velocity to Eve, which won't change when doing a gravity assist off of Eve itself, was too high for me to be able to arrow break into a captured orbit in one pass. I therefore did some arrow breaking on the second rendezvous with Eve, such that on my third and final rendezvous with Eve, I'd be traveling slow enough to capture without any use of the ion engines. With all that preparation done, we're now approaching Eve at the correct angle. We have the correct inclination relative to Gilly, and we're traveling slow enough such that we'll be able to capture without any use of the engines. At this point, we have to do some more arrow breaking passes of Eve to lower our apoapsis so that it aligns with Gilly, but nothing so as unusual as everything previous in this transfer. Despite the great deal of effort that went into minimizing our relative velocity to Gilly once we finally rendezvoused with it, it still required slightly more delta V than I had in a single charge of the battery banks. I therefore had to do quite a lot of this burn just with the trickle of electrical power from the RTGs. This was very time consuming, but not particularly difficult, and I found some other work to do in the many, many hours the craft actually took to do this. After more than four hours, we'd finally captured an orbit around Gilly. Gilly is not generally known for ridiculous burns, but in this mission, it, it took one of them. I can't find too much to say about the landing on Gilly because of the extremely low velocity and the extremely low gravity. There isn't really a wrong way to land on Gilly, but I did want to minimize the delta V used. As a result, I tried to approach the surface of Gilly at a very flat horizontal angle and then to actually turn the engines off while still traveling at 10 meters per second. It then took me a very, very long time to break to a stop, but it did end up with 10 meters per second of delta V saved, and this is just more of those little bits of savings that'll add up to a lot over time. After skipping over the surface of Gilly for what again felt like an eternity, we finally came to a stop. The challenge with walking about on the surface of Gilly is that it's just really difficult to actually stay in meaningful contact with the surface of Gilly. As a result, I'm just going to use a little bit of feel from the jetpack to move around here. But I won't be able to get any EBA propellant back this mission, so I want to make sure I have enough in case I want to do something funny on one of the moons later. So not too much to say about Gilly here, so we're going to take off and move on to our next destination. I can think of even less things to say about the takeoff from Gilly. You pretty much just point in the direction you want, fire the engines for a little bit, and you're already in orbit. Our next destination will be in the Julian system. My initial thought was that I'd be able to transfer from Eve to Joule with just two gravity assists off of Kerbin. There proved to just not be quite enough velocity in this, so I decided to go with a Eve to Kerbin to Eve, back to Kerbin, and then Joule route. So that's two gravity assists off of Kerbin and one off of Eve. As with the previous transfer, I decided to prioritize delta V efficiency over doing a quick mission in terms of elapsed time. As a result, I've waited until 18 years into the mission to find the perfect transfer window from Eve to Kerbin, such that I'll be able to save as much delta V in the Eve ejection as possible. So we've burned into an elliptical orbit of Eve and are now ready to do our final ejection burn. Though this was designed to put us onto rendezvous with Kerbin for as little delta V as possible. Once we rendezvous with Kerbin, we'll put ourselves into an orbit that'll find us back on a rendezvous with Eve again. And then we'll use that Eve assist to put us on a, a rendezvous back with Kerbin 
and that rendezvous with Kerbin will then put us onto a rendezvous with our final destination of Joule. In order to easily and efficiently capture at Joule, it's really important that we approach Joule in such a way that we'll be able to do a gravity assist off of Tylo that'll allow us to capture a net system for free. It's a lot easier to change the timing of your Joule rendezvous if you plan for it in advance rather than try to do some correction while actually on the final approach of Joule. Therefore, I actually made sure to adjust the timing of my Joule rendezvous to gravity assist before reaching there. This is just one of the many things that I had to figure out in hours of playing around with maneuver nodes to reach Joule as efficiently as possible. This is again going to be one of the things that I'll include in the gravity assist tutorial that I definitely am still working on. I know it's been quite a bit delayed at this point, but it is on the way and I think you guys are absolutely going to love it. So after many decades of waiting for ideal transfers between planets, we finally found ourselves at Joule. And thanks to our efforts earlier, Tylo is now in the correct place to let us do a quick flyby of it that will put us into a captured orbit around Joule. We now have to wait several orbits of Joule such that we reach a rendezvous with Pole, which will be our first destination in this system. It's important that this is planned out ahead of time because it's very easy to accidentally have a rendezvous with Tylo, which will then throw off your carefully planned orbit. As was the case with Gilly, I found that I was traveling at too high of a relative velocity to capture an orbit of Pole with a single injection burn. And the difference this time was more than I'd be able to do with just the trickle of electrical power from the RTGs. I therefore did only some of the injection delta V necessary, but made sure that this put me back onto an orbit of Joule that had a resonance with the orbit of Pole, such that after a couple orbits of Joule, I'd have a second rendezvous with Pole, and would this time be at a low enough relative velocity, such that I'd be able to capture all at once with one use of the battery banks. Now rendezvousing with Pole for the second time, our relative velocity was low enough that we'd easily be able to capture with just the electrical energy stored in the battery banks. Like on Minmus, we'll want to minimize the delta V loss to gravity during the descent by coming in flat and fast. However, there aren't any perfect flats on Pole like on Minmus, and in fact, Pole is relatively rugged. As a result, the best flat area I was able to find had a very significant and sharp ridge line in front of it. I therefore tried to put myself onto an angle for descent that would leave me just above the ridge. This made a great excuse for planning the second low pass of this mission, and I planned to put myself as low above that ridge as possible while descending to the flats just past it. This low pass was looking to be so low that I actually rolled the craft slightly to the right, such that the bottom of it would be leveled with the sloping ridge line. The results of this were something that I've never seen in KSP before. Possibly due to a camera issue, the craft appeared to actually bend over the ridge. I'll leave this on slow motion so you guys can take your guess at what exactly was happening here because I truly don't know. Now past the major obstacle, I fired up the ion engines and got ready for the final descent. The whole reason of aiming for this relatively flat area was that I hoped to touch down at around 30 meters per second, which in addition to saving 30 meters per second just from not having to brake that much, also reduces the time of the descent, which decreases the delta V lost to gravity. Like on Gilly, the extremely low gravity of this moon meant that I had to wait what felt like an eternity while the craft slowly skipped and braked itself to a halt. Now that we've reached the surface of Pole and stopped, it's time to bring this episode to a close. The transfer from Minmus to Gilly and then from Gilly to Pole had proved a lot more challenging and much more of a test of piloting endurance than I had anticipated. Hopefully this will make for great viewing. However, I do hope that the rest of this mission does not pose as many unexpected challenges because they did contribute greatly to how long it took me to finish this video. With all that said, I'd like to thank everyone very much for watching. Keep an eye out for episode 3 in the near future. If you enjoyed the video, do us both a solid and like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.